Hello everyone, Dr. Anna Kabeca here. It is so good to be here with you guys and to be part of, to have you here as part of my community. There is so much that I wanna share with you today and I've got an amazing expert here to share it with me. So welcome to the Girlfriend Doctor Show. We're actually recording this live on Facebook right now so you can ask your questions live. Stress is such a big issue and it is such a um, difficult thing to even talk about or even to um, deal with when you're already stressed, right? Like, oh my gosh, it's more stressful to think about handling your stress, right? It becomes stressful to think about handling your stress or doing something to de-stress or, you know, and, and, and I think I, I have people in the audience that will resonate truth with this. When someone says, you've got to slow down, you're like, oh, no, 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 don't tell me that. Don't tell me to slow down, right? No way. And so that's what I want to talk with you about today. You know, I love talking about stress. Well, I don't love talking about stress, but I, I am passionate about talking about the stress cortisol oxytocin connection. When we are stressed, we increase our cortisol, which also increases our blood sugar and can cause havoc with our hormones, increasing menopausal and perimenopausal symptoms, especially hair loss, fatigue, weight gain, acne, exhaustion midday, difficulty sleeping, you're exhausted but can't stay asleep, and mood swings, irritability, anxiety, irritation. All of those things are part of the stress cortisol connection. Now beyond that, when we're increasing cortisol, oxytocin decreases. So that creates this disconnect, this anhedonia, this lack of joy and lack of pleasure. But I am so passionate about bringing this back to you. So today on my Girlfriend Doctor show and here with us now is Donnie Wilson. I have interviewed her in my um, Instagram at the Girlfriend Doctor before, and she came out with a new book that is entitled Master Your Stress, Reset Your Health. And so she, this is Dr. Donnie Wilson. She's a naturopathic doctor, a certified professional midwife, certified nutrition specialist, and best-selling author of Master Your Stress, Reset Your Health. For more than 22 years, she has helped thousands of patients overcome health challenges and achieve wellness by using specific strategies, that address the whole body and ultimately resolve the underlying causes of distress. So, hey, Donnie, how are you? Glad to have you here with me today. Oh, so glad to be here. And I'm, I think you're right on with your introduction there in terms of how much we struggle with the effects of stress. And yet thinking about it sometimes stresses us out more. So it's like, how do we solve this? So true. So, um, you know, let's die, you know, I'm happy to dive into it and answer anybody's questions, you know, like what has us stuck like, and, and the stress just keeps coming, you know, it's not like, like, it's just rapid fire. Sometimes it feels like, right. Like, and, and we get so used to it. It's like our normal is to feel stressed. Right. And let's just talk about, give us a case, maybe your story or a story of one of the clients you've worked with to start us out on what, what brings them in and then how your um, Reset Your Health program, the new Manage Your Stress Reset Your Health program, really results in being centered and feeling that peace despite all understanding. <laughs> Well, definitely. I mean, and this is the thing is I learned everything that I wrote about in the book and everything that I do when I work with patients one on one and in programs, I learned from my own experience, I was completely run down by stress and burned out and whatever you want to call it, I was my cortisol and adrenaline were completely on the floor. <laughs> and like, I'm like, how am I even functioning at this point? Um, after naturopathic medical school and training as a midwife and, and having my own daughter and running my practice, I was like, and I was actually part of my naturopathic training was about cortisol and adrenal glands, which make cortisol. And so I had learned about this, but it wasn't until I really experienced it myself that I was like, oh, that's what I would, they were talking about when we, <laughs> when we learned about how much cortisol imbalances can affect the way we feel. And it, so I get it. It can really feel like you don't know how you're going to continue going forward in your day-to-day -day life experience for men, women, and 
now I see a lot of teenagers too who are experiencing these imbalances of cortisol levels as well as adrenaline levels that really throw us for a loop. And so most people who end up, you know, working with me or calling me, a lot of times it it may be that they're experiencing extreme fatigue. That fatigue is a very common, you know, just feeling tired when you wake up or feeling tired all day. That's a very, very common symptom. A lot of times it's also anxiety, you know, feeling like you're just like every, your brain just keeps on throwing more worries and fears at you. And maybe it's going to disrupt your sleep. For some people, it does not disrupt their sleep. Uh, and then it starts to spiral into other things like you mentioned, whether digestive issues, other hormone imbalances, maybe autoimmunity, frequent infections, or chronic infections, uh, like viral infections like HPV. And so we start to see that these different health issues come on. And we're a lot of times in conventional care, we're focused on the symptom, right? What can I do for treating anxiety or for getting me back to sleep or to suppress this allergic reaction or autoimmune condition? Um, and as a naturopathic doctor, I'm thinking, what really caused it to begin with? And so that's what I did for myself as I just wasn't going to give up until I figured it out. I'm like, I have, I want to know why and what can I do? I'm willing to change my diet. I'm willing to take herbs and nutrients. I'm willing to, you know, learn how to meditate. I'm willing to do these things, whatever it takes to feel better. And that's what I'm hearing from a lot of people now who contact me. They're like, yes, I, I can take a medication, but I, what I really want is I want to know what does my body need in order to really heal and resolve this so that I can go through my life and not be constantly, you know, feeling like I'm getting run down and drained by my life experience. Right. And this is a really good point because oftentimes the, I mean, the number one cause of all, you know, over 90% of health related um, visits to your medical doctor are caused by stress. And so there was this old thought that, oh, well, stress is just in your head, but it's not just in your head at all, right? It is in your body. It is in your physiology. Stress physiology is different, but 90% of all reason someone goes into the doctor's offices because of stress. Now, Donnie, you were a nurse midwife, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, and I'm an obstetrician, OBGYN. And so you know that when we're monitoring a baby's health, we're listening to heart rate variability. That mm -hmm. is a marker of how well their physiology is adapting to their environment. Are they in peace? Are they healthy, happy? Are they resilient? Then we have high heart rate variability. And so when you're stressed or in type A, adrenaline mode, high cortisol mode, and there are different types of stress, when you're in that really, you know, in that critical stress, your heart rate variability straight lines, that flat lines. And we know as an obstetrician, when a baby's heart rate variability flat lines, we have to get that baby out. It is time to get that baby out. And otherwise it, it you know, I mean, that, that's the big thing. It doesn't have to plummet down into these deep descents. It actually is just that loss of heart rate variability. And that says there's a sick baby and we better get it out. And then we forget about checking until, you know, now that we're, you know, menopausal or we're looking at this stuff. I mean, it, it really came heart math, which you guys listening, check out heart math and you can all measure heart rate variability with a smart app on your phone. There are many free heart rate variability monitors and heart math enables you to do biofeedback so that you can actually increase your heart rate variability. That is resetting your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, this entire connection communication system that we have. And so um, let's, let's break it down too. Let's break this down when we're talking about the HPA axis. Let's talk about, okay, what is that? Hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. You've already mentioned the adrenals. So let's start there. Mm -hmm. What are the adrenal glands and, and how do they feed into the entire, you know, into our entire nervous system? Why is it so important in the stress response and how we can mas master stress? And I love, by the way, how you're bringing in, you know, the, what we can learn from babies, but also some from moms. One of the things that so inspired me about researching the HPA axis is that I saw that women in labor, labor progresses so much more efficiently when we have optimal amounts of cortisol and adrenaline. And when there's more stress and fear, labor slows down. 
or if there's not enough cortisol and adrenaline, labor slows down. And so it's like the same thing. It's like we can learn from women who are in labor and we can learn from babies that it's about, for humans, it's about how do we find our optimal stress response and stress recovery. It's not about having zero stress and it's not about having zero cortisol, right? It's how do we have the optimal amount so that we can respond to stress and then have our rest and recovery part too. And so this is, when you mentioned that HPA axis, this is part of our stress response system. This is where the brain is communicating to the adrenal glands, which are down above your kidneys. So the brain is signaling there's a stress going on. Okay, adrenal glands, make more cortisol and adrenaline to help us respond to the stress in the moment, which is a good thing. We need that. Like if, if, if there's a siren going off, you want your cortisol and adrenaline to help you get out of danger. The problem is when we're under constant stress throughout our days. And so this is a constant signal from our hypothalamic pituitary access to our adrenal glands. And so the adrenal glands keep on getting this stress signal. That's when the cortisol and adrenaline get thrown off their optimal levels. You see it, we normally should have a little bit higher cortisol in the morning and gradually decreasing through the day. It's not, it shouldn't be zero and it shouldn't be the same all the time, right? It should be a little higher in the morning, gradually decreasing. But when well, we're yeah, under um, constant stress, it gets disrupted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cortisol wakes us up in the morning. That's the function of cortisol. Not at 3 a.m. When you're getting that cortisol spike at 3 a.m., you're being awoken then. That's not ideal. So it's the it's the um, when it's supposed to wake you up around sunrise and or shortly thereafter. And it's so when I think about it, like this is so essential, right? Like to have that cortisol signal. It's not just this. It's just not just a convenient thing. It's actually an essential thing. Like when we have not only does it help wake us up, but that cortisol signaling to our all of our other hormones in our body, it's signaling to our digestion, our immune system, our nervous system. So if that cortisol is even a little too high for the morning or too low for the morning, it's gonna send the wrong signal through your whole body. It's like the wrong text message, get the wrong memo goes out. And now every other system in the body is like thinking you're under stress when maybe you're not under stress. And so it's like the body learns these patterns and it anticipates that today is going to be the same as yesterday. And so if, if our bodies are anticipating stress, then we end up experiencing stress, even if today's not that stressful for you. So because a lot of people say that to me, they're like, I'm fine. I have, I'm happy in my relationship. I have a good job. I'm, everything's cool. Why am I still experiencing this? And it's because the stress from your past your body remembers it and we need to help your body recover from that past stress experience and get your cortisol back to optimal. So it's sending the balance signals out to your body. Yeah, and it's like when we talk about the HPA axis, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, we really need to add in the thyroid and the gonads, the sex organs. So ovaries for women, testes for men, because that's an integral part of this biofeedback, right? That's an integral part of this communication system. And so where stress can play out is emptying your tank. And often you have more mood swings, more nervous disorders, more anxiety. And I would say, is it bipolar or hormonal? When we address the hormonal issues, open up the detoxification pathways, man, life is in full color, in full bloom at that point. That is completely different than the dark, lonely place where we sometimes find ourselves because of this chronic condition. So let's talk about the, the different, you know, let's talk more about, you know, you've really delved into the HPA. So talking about the role of thyroid in stress response, as well as, um, you know, as well as how it affects what you've seen, how it affects um, hormonal balance and menopause specifically. Well, we know that when that cortisol is either too high or too low, it's going to send a, uh, the stress signal, an imbalance signal to the other hormone, the other glands too. So a lot of times then people, more common might be low thyroid function. Although for some people, when they're under a lot of stress, their thyroid goes to high functioning. 
So it can, and then sometimes if the thyroid's out of balance, then it sends another stress signal back and further disrupts the cortisol. So they're constantly in communication with each other and rebounding off of each other. Um, and so it's, it's definitely important to be measuring all of these hormones to find out for you what's going on, right? Like, what is your cortisol at this point in time? What is, how is your thyroid doing? Is it under functioning or over functioning? What do we need to do to recalibrate it? And the same with ovaries and testes, those hormones get affected too. I look at it as like, we know that when we're under stress, our bodies, of course, are not going to be prioritizing reproductive hormones. They're going to be prioritizing uh, survival <laughs> mechanisms, right? And so if our body's constantly getting a stress signal from high or low cortisol, it's definitely going to disrupt the production of estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. And if you throw into that a, a natural body transition like menopause or perimenopause, when the ovaries are already shifting their hormone production, you add on top of that an imbalance of cortisol, it's just going to amplify the imbalance of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So that's why I think a lot of women really feel this in their 40s and 50s. They're like, what is going on? I already maybe was feeling stress a little bit, but now I really feel it. Well, it's because it's everything is being amplified by the hormone shifts. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So what are some ways that like you like to address it? What's the lifestyle approach? What supplements? Mm -hmm. um, do you favor? Well, and here's, I mean, generally, yes, I, I always feel like, okay, let's, let's start with diet, because there's a lot we can do with dietary changes that are going to be beneficial. And then we can also look at, yes, what we call might categorize as lifestyle, or what I'm, I usually call stress recovery activities, what are activities that we can choose day to day that we know are going to help bring our cortisol back to more optimal levels, let alone just having a better self-care routine. It's amazing how just what we do day to day in our daily routine in terms of what we feed ourselves, when we feed ourselves, um, makes such, those are all signals into our body. We want to send signals of safety. We want your body to, to know that it's safe. You're going to get fed at consistent times. You're going to get fed consistent amounts of macronutrients without too many, you know, sugars and toxins. You're going to get adequate sleep is another thing. You know, our timing of sleep and getting enough sleep. All of these essential daily activities that humans do are important for helping our body know that we're, that it doesn't need to be in a stress response. And then from there, we can use specific nutrients and herbs that the research has shown helps to get the cortisol back to optimal. So we know, for example, if cortisol is too high, we can look at the research and see, oh, there, here, this nutrient and herb will help reset the HPA axis and get the cortisol back to optimal. Or if the cortisol is too low, we're going to use a different set of nutrients and herbs to help the adrenals bring the cortisol back up to back to optimal. I just think that's so cool, isn't it? To think that we can use nutrients and herbs to help our adrenal glands re-optimize the cortisol production. And by the way, this is not, you know, as you know, it's not, it's not going to show in your regular blood work and you're, you know, you're not going to hear this in your annual physical exam, most likely, because this isn't, they're going to be more likely to pay attention if the adrenals can completely go off track, right? If the cortisol goes way too high or way too low, they're going to pick up on that. But what we're talking about is when it's shifted, perhaps even slightly off track is enough to still create a lot of imbalances in your body. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we had a good question that came in mm -hmm. um, and it was, it was about that. What is the best home test? Angela asked, what's the best home test to test your cortisol levels and what are the best supplements to help with un unbalanced cortisol levels? Mm -hmm. So we'll, we touched on that a little bit and I can talk about some herbs and things that I love to use. What home test um, do you recommend? What testing for cortisol or and or adrenal function do you mm -hmm. find to be most accurate? Well, that's the thing. I mean, you can do a blood test like at the regular lab for cortisol, but essentially you're going to get a single cortisol level, which only tells you your cortisol at that time and when you had your blood drawn, which can sometimes be stressful. <laughs> but what we really want to elevate it, right? Possibly then you're elevated. like, is this really my cortisol level? By the time I get myself to the lab and have uh, my blood drawn, 
you know, what we really want is we want to know your cortisol at different times a day. As we talked about, it varies different times a day. So better to measure your cortisol in, when you first wake up and, and midway through the day and the evening and the bedtime. So we get a much better sense of what your cortisol is up to. And you can do that either with saliva, so you can spit at a tube at different times a day, or you can do it with a urine sample. And I find both are accurate. And there's different labs out there that offer their specialty labs, usually out of pocket that you order from a, a functional practitioner, but there, then you can do it at home. You can spit at a tube at different times a day or collect urine at different times a day. The urine one is usually from the precision analytical lab called Dutch testing, but um, um, also I'll use saliva testing so that we can you know, either way, now we know really what your cortisol is up to. And I recommend, by the way, based on my research, I would also highly suggest measuring adrenaline levels also. This is norepinephrine and epinephrine, which is also produced by the adrenal glands, as well as DHEA, another hormone made by the adrenal glands. If you can get more information about your adrenal function, it's only going to help you optimize their function even more. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I agree. I think that one of the things that I've learned in testing, and I've lectured and trained physicians in testing, which is better? Blood, urine, saliva, and, and there are benefits and, and downsides to each and every one of them. Until we get really good at energetic testing, yes. <laughs> then um, we've, got, we've got to work with these limitations. But I think each one of them will tell us something. Specifically, when we're looking at a sal you know, when we're looking at baseline cortisol now, we can look in the saliva, you know, we can look at cortisol levels, but if they're on a steroid medication, like for mm -hmm. asthma or eczema or anything like that, it's going to disrupt the results. Yes. We're going to get false, you know, results. So with salivary testing, if you're not on any of those, and these are baseline, I think it works really nicely. And now they do the small salivary test kit. So you don't have a lot of saliva that you've got to give out and you're going to measure your DHEA along and then it's DHEA in the saliva. Um, it's DHEA S in the blood. So if you guys are asking for these tests to make sure you differentiate really makes a big difference. So they're going to look at DHEA and then a four, typically a four point cortisol. And you're measuring this throughout the day. And that's really nice. And then urine testing to look at your metabolism of cortisol, right? We're really looking at the metabolic end products or byproducts of cortisol. Our urine tells us so much, you guys. Man, and I was thinking about this. Where was I the other day? Or someone was telling me about Lake Lanier or in Atlanta is really become very estrogenic lake. And they're saying, well, it's the birth control pills and women's urine and coming, you know, and all this stuff. I'm like, it's the pesticides, herbicides and everything you're spraying mm. on that golf course right around that lake. But also, I mean, really seeing that feminization. So anyway, in our urine, there's lots of hormones and that goes into our water supply, just to clarify that. So make sure y'all have, we just, I just did a happy, healthy home podcast and I talk about, um, I did not talk, I talked about infrared sauna and detoxing and that is so good for, for your body. So yes. I also um, talk about um, what my organic bed that I'm sleeping in by organics and I have an air filtration system by air doctor in the house and I have a water purifier downstairs because I don't have, I haven't connected a new one for my new sink. So I actually have to go downstairs to get purified alkaline water is the one that I use, but otherwise I use a structured water filter thing up here. And so like, I mean, it is important to clean, to mm -hmm. decrease the endocrine disruptors that you're having. So I went off on a tangent, you guys on, you know, thank you. Thank you. But this is good because I, I mean, those to me are also stresses on our body, toxins as a stress. And yes, we can, we can't avoid all stress in our lives, but we can choose to make take steps to decrease our toxic stress exposure which is only going to help you know and it's so important absolutely absolutely so all that to talk about urine testing urine can tell us something and i used to tell my patients in my medical practice is that i will check every single one of your body fluids at one time or another i mean i'm <laughs> going to check urine saliva your vaginal fluid your stool yes. i mean just name it so and um and it tells us something different so it's really important in hormone balancing and managing an individual to look at it these different ways not all at the same time use it over time cortisol in the blood i mean 
if it's flatlined at a, if it's low at a blood draw, I know you're severely low, but I'm also going to look at your DHEAS at the same time. And, but otherwise, if it's normal, I'm not going to rule out adrenal insufficiency or adrenal dysfunction. We're going to use new terminology now. So, so, and then in the urine, that'll sh tell us something and the saliva that tells us something. And that's really what we're looking at, what we're really trying to understand. Okay, well, how are you inter interacting with your environment at this time, mm -hmm. at this time of your life and your environments with your epigenetics and, and what we need to do about that to restore. So when we talk about supplements, the first thing, the first thing that ever helped me was my blend of maca and some other superfoods from my journey around the world. And so for me, it's my Mighty Maca Plus 30 superfoods. It's combined in an adaptogenic blend, meaning it supports your adrenals if you're overdrive or underdrive. And I used it for myself and I used it for my patients. And what we saw clinically was an improvement of 70 to 200% in two months by taking two to three scoops of Mighty Maca Plus a day. So that's a huge, I mean, that's better than any other protocol I've used in supporting your, you know, again, being adaptogenic because there are many adaptogens, not just maca in there. And the second thing is, you know, when we're working on um, uh, supplementation, we're also, that goes after actually detoxification. We always want to detoxify and open up the receptors, but certain things like Magnolia officinalis. I love Magnolia officinalis. I actually am putting it in my new nighttime sleep formula called Night Seas with some sour cherry and some maca. I mean, it's really good. So Magnolia officinalis is a great um, cortisol leveler. And ashwagandha has a lot of research on it. L-theanine is another uh, vitamin that has a lot of or amino acid that has a lot of research on it. So those are some of my, so those are some of my favorites that I like to use. Definitely, and especially, and the thing I always like to emphasize is it's so important to know your court. Now, like you mentioned, maca and some adaptogens will work. Either way, you know, they, the, re, the term adaptogen means that it's going to bring it back to optimal, kind of, whether it's a little too high or a little too low. Um, another might be holy basil, for example, right? Oh, it I love that brings, too. Brings it to optimal. But there's, like, if you know that your cortisol's on the high side at certain times a day, that's when, yes, I agree, like magnolia root and ashwagandha, then you're going to want to take them at the time of day that your cortisol is too high. So it's really best to test first. So you know, oh, because one person it might be 3 p.m., another person it might be 10 p.m., and you want to dose it at the right time to help bring it to optimal. And another person may okay. have come totally the opposite, might have low cortisol, in which case you're not, probably not going to be choosing magnolia root, at least not the time of day when your cortisol is low. You're going to be choosing more like a rhodiola, or glyceriza or eleutherococcus, these are herbs that do a better job of raising the cortisol when it's too low. And that's what, you know, a lot of my point is, is to know your body, you know, to, to get the right treatment, because otherwise you might be taking something and not feeling any better. And you're like, well, why don't I feel any better? And it could be because it's just, it's not the optimal herb or nutrient for you at right. the right time of day. Yeah, no, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And so when you're in your, your mission to write this book was to empower individuals to be able to manage their stress and reset their health better. Can you give us three tools or tips that everyone listening can start right away to help re, you know, manage their stress and reset their health? Absolutely. Well, one, number I'm one, gonna... I'm going to go. Number one is get her a book. Get Dr. Donnie Wilson's book. This again, a naturopathic doctor with a background in midwifery, also very cool and functional medicine trained. And her book is Manage Your Stress, Reset Your Health. Dr. Donnie Wilson, it's available on Amazon, anywhere books are sold. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're yes, welcome. I, I mean, I, I just put so much um, of my just knowledge and experience and, and hope in this book that it can help so many people because I know that this information is not what you're going to hear. And I'm so glad you're sharing it, um, Anna, because, you know, I feel like anyone listening is so lucky to be hearing from you, like, here's essential information you're not going to get everywhere to really help you navigate your life and your health issues and, and stay ahead of it instead of having all these health issues tumbling 
tumbling you down left and right and feeling like you can't get ahead of it. There's so many tools we can use. In the book, I, I refer to what I call the CARE method, which is clean eating, adequate sleep, recovery activities, and exercise to match your stress pattern. So this is where I'm also really begging researchers to do more research on diet, sleep, recovery activities and exercise based on whether a person has high cortisol they're trying to bring down or low cortisol they're trying to bring up. And I- Okay, wait, you gotta say it again. What does CARE stand for? Ah, uh, CARE stands for clean eating. Clean eating. Adequate sleep, recovery activities, and exercise. And recovery activities, there's a whole menu of them. Everything from mindfulness and breath work, and you talked about biofeedback earlier, using your heart rate variability to monitor um, how we can optimize our, our sympathetic um, and vagus nerve recovery from stress. Um, there's also everything from listening to music and dancing and just spending time in nature. All of these activities have been shown to some degree to help us recover from stress. And so what I encourage people to do is to, even just from listening to this, do a little check-in with yourself and say, how am I doing currently with my self-care, which is your, you know, how are you eating in a way that's gonna support your body to recover from stress and minimize your stress exposure? How are you, are, how are you doing with your sleep? Are you getting that seven and a half to nine hours of sleep or what do we need to do to improve it? Uh, are you getting some recovery activities, those that I just mentioned? Are you getting some each day, even five minutes? Um, are you exercising? Not that you have to be doing, in fact, I warn you against over-exercising, so I don't want you to overdo it. I want you to exercise to match your body at this point in time so that you can be recovering from stress and not causing more stress on your body. And so this is you know, what I encourage in terms of even just checking in on your daily self-care routine. What, because I think so much of us when we're, especially when we're under stress, we lose track of our taking care of ourselves. I just talked to a patient this morning and she's, you know, she has a new grandbaby in the family. And so she's taking care of the baby, but she's losing track of, is she feeding herself? Is she getting enough sleep? Is she drinking enough water? Is she getting her recovery activities and exercise while being a, a grandma, you know? So it's like, how do we take care, get good at taking care of ourselves while taking care of others and while living our lives? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think that's, that's well said. So our treatment for mastering our stress is this care, clean eating, adequate sleep, recovery activities and exercise. And based on that recovery activities, I will tell you, what I tell my clients, what I, I tell my audience, and what I remind myself is that the biggest reset for stress is honestly a three-day camping trip or three days with the horses, mm -hmm. just getting out in nature. We really need to make sure that we get out in nature, sunrise, sunset, every day, get sunshine. And that is, I mean, we are energetic beings and sunshine fuels our energy. And that is one of the be best stress relievers. So it's it coming back to nature. I will say we can't be mother nature. We have to work with her. And um, I think you agree to that. Any Anything, last words you want to share with our audience? I love that, by the way. I, I think it's sometimes it's hard for us to set aside time for ourselves, but it's essential. And you're right. Re recognizing we are humans living on planet earth and, and nature gives us our sig these signals. And so we just need to encourage ourselves to put ourselves in the position to receive those anti-stress signals, including from the sun and from light and darkness and, and, and so on. And so, um, and then the other piece is just, yeah, just knowing that you're an individual, that this is not one size fits all. Stress doesn't affect each of us the same. So I really encourage you, and this is what I talk about in the book, ha stress, re mastering stress or stress recovery is not the same for everyone. We can learn from the research and from these individualized testing, how do we help you recover and master your stress so that, you know, that's different than the other person, you know? So really be willing to customize it and to know that this is part of our life journey. You know, it's not like the stress is gonna end at some point. We, the stress is gonna be there. It's a matter of us choosing to support ourselves through the stress. That's really where we need to be. 
with this. Yeah, no, I agree. And, um, and thank you. Say that so well. And I know you've got a lot in your book there. We have one more question came in from Diana. Mm -hmm. And she says, how do you know when your cortisol is high or low? Like, how do you really know? And for, I think this is really good. You know, I would say test, don't guess. But there are some symptoms associated with high cortisol and symptoms associated with low cortisol. Now, this can vary throughout the day. You can be low in the morning and high at night high in the morning and low and then or low across the board so there are different there are different ones but how how do you know when it's high and how do you know when it's low Donnie? well and i'm glad you asked this so in the book and also on my website i i created a quiz that's based on the symptoms um so if you even just go to drdonnie.com it's going to pop up it's a stress quiz or i can i can type it in the chat for you so you can see it's um dr donny spelled out d-o-c-t-o-r-d-o-n-i.com forward slash stress quiz and you're going to be able to go through it's i think 15 questions so it's pretty quick and you and, and it's exactly what you're describing it's based on the symptoms what i do is i look at five areas i look at your energy level so if you're very fatigued, it's more likely you have low cortisol, but not always. Sometimes people with high cortisol have low energy also. Um, so that's one piece of it is your energy level at different times a day. It's also looking at your sleep patterns. Um, how well are you falling asleep, staying asleep? I look at your focus. How well can your, you complete tasks or are you experiencing some brain fog and distraction? I also look at your um, how just your body feels like there's certain symptoms in your body that can reflect uh, cortisol and adrenaline levels, as well as let's see what am I miss mood. Um, are you having low mood or anxiety. Um, so these are the areas that we look at in those five areas of your body that help me to see, are you likely to have high or low cortisol, high or low adrenaline. And so that quiz helps you to know your stress pattern and then to be able to solve for it. Okay, how do I need to implement care and which herbs and nutrients are right for you based on your stress pattern? Yep, I love it and thank you. And I think that um, really is a great way to end with my rapid fire question. So Donnie, I do these rapid fire questions for the girl for whenever I'm doing an interview on the Girlfriend Doctor show and this will be recorded in and put in my podcast so you guys will be able to catch this there. So the rapid fire questions based on the four pillars of the girlfriend doctor, which is nourish, shine, awaken, and embrace, which it stand, we stand on in order to have beautiful longevity and quality of life with the best relationships and the best of health. And a, a motto that we go by and that we put on our supplement boxes is when you have your health, you have a thousand wishes. When you don't have your health, you have only one. So with that said, I'm going to investigate your pillars. Let's see. Nourish. What is your favorite food, Dr. Donnie? Oh, my favorite food. Wow. Oh my gosh. Well, I doesn't have to be the healthiest. <laughs> I was just saying, I'm a favorite. chocolate lover. So a lot of times I'm out to find the, the healthiest version of chocolate. We know chocolate is, is filled with antioxidants. Um, and so it has a lot of good purposes, but we want to make sure we don't get chocolate with a bunch of sugar and other stuff in there. So I'm always, anyone who knows me knows that I'm like, I, nearby me, I usually have some really healthy dark chocolate. <laughs> I love it. Is there a brand that's your favorite right now? One of my favorites is from Hue Chocolate. Do you know Hue? H-U Kitchen. H-U Kitchen. Yes. Um, and um, that's one of my favorites. And um, But wherever I am, I'm always like, okay, let me see what I can find. Which I, in, in, like if I'm in uh, South America, I'll just go for straight cacao. That's even, even better when I can get it. <laughs> or some, they have them in Mexico too, organic cacao, right? That's so, so delicious. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. And now for shine, what's your, what's your, you have glowing skin. What's your skincare, favorite skincare product or, or beauty hack? You probably know Dr. Trevor Cates. I love um, Dr. Trevor Cates, the spa yeah. doctor. The spa doctor. So she's, she has one of my favorite cleansers. Um, I use the spa doctor cleanser and, um, and I've just been, because it's organic, doesn't have any, it has, I think like three ingredients. And, um, and, and I, a lot of time I have a, you mentioned acne earlier. I, my body, my skin easily will turn to acne if I don't have something that's working for me. So, um, so I use the, 
The spa doctor cleanser. Awesome. Okay. And then Awaken, what are you um, reading right now? Oh, wow. Going? Oh my gosh, thank you for asking. I actually, one of, I mean, the, one of the books that I've been reading is a book about shamanism. Um, I'm reading about all different shamanistic healers from around the world, and that's one that I've been really interested in because it um, allows me to really look at a different way of looking at the body and healing and understanding different systems of medicine. Wonderful. Good. Thank you. And, and I, didn't, I actually don't know, are you married or single or... I'm single. single. And so with intimacy, what is your favorite thing about intimacy? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, girlfriend you know, to girlfriend. I mean, I was thinking about it. Like the thing is like a lot of times now we're, we're connecting with each other like this, like on a video or, you know, texting people or, you know, like it's not so much one-on-one -on -one. and it's, so I think that there's something, it makes me wonder like ways that we can experience intimacy, even if we're not in person with other people. And of course there's intimate, we can have intimacy with ourselves. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a really interesting question of like, how do we, it, even when we're connecting with a friend, on a video or a phone call, how do we allow that oxytocin? Because to me, intimacy, a lot of it is stimulating oxytocin, right? Mm -hmm. So just getting good at allowing the oxytocin to be stimulated, even if we're on a phone call or even if we're with our pets. I mean, one of my favorites is um, as, as animals. So I spend a lot of time, you just heard my dog scratching over here. Yeah. I'm a lot of times with uh, dogs and cats. And so I you know, if it's, if it's not just with myself, it's like, how do I allow oxytocin to flow, even if I'm with on, the, on a phone call with a friend or in uh, present with animals? Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Hanel wrote, I just ordered Dr. Donnie Wilson's book. I did the stress quiz and I'm a night owl looking forward to learning more. So awesome. awesome. So I'll definitely keep you in the loop with how she does. And thank you, Donnie, for being here. Thank you to everyone who is part of the Girlfriend Doctor community and the Girlfriend Doctor show. We are continuing to grow. We have over 60,000 downloads a month. I mean, I'm shocked. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful, shocked, and honored at those numbers. I just learned it. So I hadn't been really tracking. So, you know, what gets measured gets managed. And so that's really, that's really important to check our numbers, right? Like standing on the scale and checking your waist measurement and doing these accountability these check, checking your labs and looking at what is getting better over time. But I'm really honored for that. And I wanna thank all of you for your reviews. And if you haven't left a review for The Girlfriend Doctor Show, please do wherever you listen to The Girlfriend Doctor Show on iTunes, on YouTube, and on my website. So I thank you all for being here and we'll see you next time. I look forward to it. Bye everyone.